So I just wanted to do a quick video update here at the Goat Rock Forest Garden um, in the Adirondacks, uh, upstate New York, or zone 4A. Um, and it's starting to get chilly. We had our first real frost. Um, things are starting to change. Um, and I just wanted to share a little bit of the work that I've been doing over the past few days here. So essentially what I've been doing is I've been working to preserve this main pathway that comes from Goat Rock, kind of the main entrance over here. Um, and so this is, you know, one of the very first areas that people will see. So I think that it's important that this area be kind of the most manicured, you know, with very nice paths that are mostly level and smooth and nice to walk on with bare feet as opposed to some of the areas further away which, um, you know, get a little bit more rugged. And so it's been a little bit tricky because, you know, we have some plants in this area that are already established and I don't want to disturb them too much. Um, but I have artfully changed the orientation of the paths, changed the network here, um, and also included this swale system. So there's a very subtle um, little berm right here which forces the water to go this way laterally on contour um, behind these plants that were already established here. There's a service berry um, hascap right there, um, an oak tree. But as you can see, I have dug the swale out and brought it all the way to here. I scooped out material and mounded it on this side. Um, only about two inches. So I didn't want to go too deep because there are roots, you know, from these established plants. Um, so, and the reason for doing that, um, you probably already understand, but, you know, basically we're just trying to create a passive irrigation system that slows, spreads, and sinks water um, during excess rainfall, you know, during a um, runoff event. Rather than having that water just wash away onto the field. Um, it can be retained in the swale and it'll soak into the berm. So, um, you know, it gets the water right where the plants need it. Um, so the other reason why I ended up reworking this whole area, um, it first started when someone rolled their ankle in the steep channel over there. Um, so it, rather than having a steep channel, um, I've created these series of micro basins which I talk about in another video. Uh, there's a micro basin up there. When that overtops, it fills this micro basin. When that overtops, it fills this this one. And then that one flows over into this larger one. And, you know, initially I had it right here, sort of ending here, and then I had to think about where it was gonna go. And I was either gonna make another micro basin, like kind of right there, or, try and go all the way around these existing established plants that we had in this area. And, you know, that really wasn't that hard. I only had to dig down a few inches deeper to get around that way. And it kind of gave me an excuse to work on this area, which had been really overcrowded with raspberries, as you can see over here. Um, so I managed to create a level swale that goes all the way around these established plants. Uh, only had to go down about an inch or two right here so that um, we weren't disturbing the root zones. And, you know, then I'm not really sure where it's gonna go, but probably all the way out to where the pond is. And then maybe it can overtop into the pond on this side. Because the pond sort of has an outlet right there for when it's raining really hard. You know, when it rains really hard and the pond starts to overflow, it overflows under this bridge and then around, around over here. Um, so if that's the outlet, then maybe that whole micro basin will drain into the, into the pond on this side, somewhere over here. Um, so that, you know, when there is a lot of excess water, it flows all the way on contour. 
throughout the whole, this whole section of garden. So, and the other thing to consider, um, you know, this is sort of a higher traffic area. It's, it's where you first come in. So I kind of want it to look really nice. Um, so I spent more effort defining the beds and the paths, um, you know, and then one concept that I'm sort of uh, experimenting with is putting logs on the uphill side of the beds and rocks on the downhill south facing side. Um, that way more solar radiation uh, is being absorbed by these rocks and the moisture coming down from the slope will be absorbed by these you know, rotting logs over time. Uh, so, and you can see this bed is pretty well defined. Um, I added compost and mulch, and then I planted balsam poplar, hazelnut, and a mountain mint. Um, and then I also threw in some other things, um, you know, and then thick layer of wood chips. And then I even inoculated it with wine caps. Oh, and there's um, apple mint over there. And th this is a black currant. So, you know, I'm proud of this. Um, but what I started doing on this other bed is a little bit more interesting. And this is kind of why I wanted to make a video. Um, so basically I transplanted small clumps of forest floor, including some little plants um, that were in the understory to out here in what was formerly a pasture six years ago, but what is now becoming a diverse food forest kind of in the um, old field stage here things are really just starting to get established you know different soils are starting to develop because of the plants that we've put in um, but what i wanted to experiment with is it is it viable to transplant and establish a more acidic blueberry you know favorable for blueberries and also for lingonberries and cranberries um, is it possible to transplant that into the forest garden so yeah the, we got our cultivar blueberries and then i transplanted some uh, velvet leaf blueberries which are more of a low wild native blueberry um, and then i've got a hazelnut which will get pretty large eventually um, and lingonberries down here which will take over. Um, and then I'm gonna go get some cranberries from over here and spread them around as well. See, so yeah, all those plants are related. Um, these are all in the Ericaceae family. Um, and it's a very interesting family. A lot of very interesting um, fungal symbiosis going on. Soil biology, soil chemistry. Um, and so the thought here is if I want to establish this little habitat right here, then I need to transplant those fungal symbionts into, into the soil and start to generate the type of soil that those organisms thrive in, which tend to be, you know, under coniferous trees. So, so and I'm not really sure if this is going to work, you know, or like how well this is going to work, um, but we'll see. And, you know, I'll document it. Um, but, you know, already you can see lots of very interesting uh, organisms that came along with just this few bucketfuls of leafy mulch from that area, uh, as well as like the chunks, you know, the full little, they're basically like fecal transplants. <laughs> so, so I'm not totally done yet. I still want to transplant a lot more lingonberry and cranberry um, and then mossy logs uh, with all the life that they support coming with them. Uh, to basically, you know, transplant a little bit of a different habitat from right over there to right here. Yeah, so we're trying to develop a diverse agro ecosystem, right? You know, so we're really working hard on this 
this little section right here to get this to be, you know, a really well-established uh, permanent guild, uh, permanent plant assemblage here that works well together, um, you know, and out-competes the grass and other plants and sort of, you know, just cranks out food. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if this little extension that I've created will establish and become part of this sort of on contour berm that meanders around, um, you know, and become a very blueberry dominant. So we've got a high bush blueberry from there all the way to out here with low bush blueberries, cranberries, lingonberries underneath. There's actually a lot of really interesting things going on under here. There are ramps, which this is all you can see of the ramps. There's a horseradish, which I'm not sure if that really fits in here, but you know, that's occupying a little niche in there. Um, you know, and then there's this solidago, this goldenrod, um, and then there's low bush blueberries, and I've even seen lingonberries. Um, oh, and then there's chives back there, and I've seen walking onion, and there's mint. So there's this, you know, incredibly diverse understory, um, this little guild forming here where, um, you know, eventually this oak back here will be the tall canopy um, and the service berry will be kind of a understory canopy, you know, secondary canopy. And then the shrub layer here, the hascap, and I planted some blueberries. Um, and then, you know, the forest floor being ramps, low bush blueberry, um, chives, you know, mint, whole assortment of things competing down here in the shadier, moist understory. So I better wrap it up. I think the lawnmower is coming. So hopefully you enjoyed. Um, I'll keep updating on this system over here. And I hope you have a good one.